first time you meet him, he's funny. The second time, he's amazing. The third time, you realize he's the most dangerous man in the universe. The first episode of Peter Capaldi's last season of Doctor Who may start with an out of order sign on the TARDIS. But the screeching guitar that soon follows makes it very clear that the In The Loop star and Oscar winner isn't ending his stint as the 12th Time Lord quietly. On the other hand, the BBC America April 15th debut of Doctor Who's spin-off class right after the premiere of the 10th episode of the latest run of Doctor Who, well, there is a dash of Capaldi at the beginning, but the eight-episode Patrick Ness created young adult series, which is already played in the UK, goes for gritty, but is actually a bit too unsmooth, actually, in the wrong ways at least at the beginning. Do you know the feeling of dread? Just beyond what you see, just beyond what you know, there's something out there waiting for you. Now, Doctor Who aficionados will know the significant role that London's fictional Coal Hill School, now renamed Coal Hill Academy, has played in the Time Lord series from the very beginning back in 1963 and over the years since. So the notion of setting up an ensemble spin-off there made a lot of sense which unfortunately, class itself doesn't do until several episodes in. Despite a literally dashing opening, a blunted attempt at insight on the state of modern Britain on the back of a Downton Abbey slag reveals exactly where more of the alien battling and teenage handling class is going to go. True to the format that the clearly influential Buffy the Vampire Slayer laid out over 20 years ago, Clash starts with a new boy, Charlie, played by Greg Austin, trying to fit into his new school, which sits on an interdimensional riff, if you don't know, and his new planet. Wonderful is the contriving but occasionally well-intentioned Lady Loxley in Mr. Selfridges. Catherine Kelly is much more constrained here, playing the Doctor Who appointed and scandalized, to put it mildly, main teacher of Clash, Miss Quill who the Time Lord has put in charge of the main group of students that also include Sophie Hopkins, Vivi Oprah, and Faye El-Sayed. But... No, no, no. I thought you were going to get us out of here. Why would you be safer somewhere else? Look, Class has great opening graphics and finds a stronger gait by its third episode and definitely improves, but it still left me wanting more of its source material, the Doctor himself which I have to say I've been a fan of since the days of Tom Baker. And to that, big changes are coming and have come to Doctor Who in its 10th season. For one thing, there is the Time Lord's first openly gay companion in University Cafeteria employee Bill Potts, played by a very vibrant Pearl Mackey. Now, whether she'll bridge the gap to the next and yet unannounced Doctor after Capaldi exit and the latest regeneration takes place, well, that is undetermined, which is a drag. Because from what I've seen, the overall character of Bill is a great direction for the Doctor, who rightly sees great potential in her. And by the time Potts gets inside the TARDIS herself, her response to who the man she assumed was merely an eccentric university lecturer really is, and what he does amidst the rising soundtrack, is openly hilarious, which is something that happens on Doctor Who, and when it does, is fantastic and refreshing for a new season and new companion reset. It's time. Doctor. Bring it. Of course, with the return of the Matt Lucas portrayed and revamped Nardle, and later in the season, John Sims as the master, and no spoilers, but there are Daleks, Doctor Who will also see showrunner Stephen Moffat leave to at the end of this season, and maybe even producer and Sherlock co-creator and cast member Mark Gaddis. Now, no spoilers again as to where it could all go, and once you drain out the sentimentality though, we all know that every Doctor who plays the Time Lord has his time and then must move on. Fine, but as he has shown since 2014, and as recently as the superhero-themed Christmas special, Capaldi is certainly one of the best and most distinctive Doctors since the series relaunched in 2005, and actually I would say even since its early 60s debut. So whoever gets the gig next, Capaldi will not be forgotten anytime soon, especially with his efforts in season 10, which you should check out even if you are an old Who fan or a novice. I have to say, Peter Capaldi, your Doctor Who time was damn good days, and you will be missed.